Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Pelshia, moderator for the conference call. Welcome to Inox Green Q3 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participants will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note this conference is recorded. I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Pelsia. Good evening. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I welcome you all to the Q3 FY24 earnings call for Inox Clean Energy Services. Today, we have with us Mr. Devan Chan, Executive Director. Inox GFL Group, Mr. Kailash Tarachandani, CEO Inox Spin, Mr. S.K. Matsudana, CEO Inox Clean Energy Services. We will start with brief opening remarks by the management, followed by Q&A. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you to the Q3 FY24 earnings call of IGSL. The company announced the Q3 results at its board meeting held on Friday 9th, February. The results along with the earnings presentation are available on the stock exchanges as well as on our website. Before we move, on, move ahead, let me quickly take you through the financials for the quarter. During Q3 FY24, on consolidated basis, Inox Green has reported revenue of Rs. 60.5 crore in Q3 FY24 versus Rs. 58.2 crore in Q2 FY24. A beta of Rs. 23.7 crore in Q3 FY24 versus Rs. 31.4 crore in Q2 FY24. Pat of rupees 0.8 crore in Q3 FY24 versus rupees 3.4 crore in Q2 FY24. Mission to 96.84%. Q3 results were primarily impacted due to preventive and proactive maintenance activities taken up during the quarter, which is primarily a low wind season for wind turbines. To ensure high mission availability during the upcoming high wind season resulted in higher expenses compared to previous quarter. Now I will briefly provide an update on our business operations and outlook before we open the floor for q and Inox Green is a stable, asset light, long term annuity, cash generation business. Inox Green primarily operates in the business of providing long-term O&M services for wind farm projects. The company has long-term service contracts with its customers, including comprehensive contracts and common infrastructure with built-in annual escalations, resulting in very sticky revenues and stable margins. Inox Green's current O&M portfolio stands at 3.2 gigawatt. The company is committed to almost doubling its o portfolio from the current levels to 6 gigawatt by FY26 through both organic and inorganic means. On the operational front, we have been able to improve the availability of the turbines in our portfolio consistently and continue to improve through digital innovations and better operational practices. For Q3 FY24, our overall plant availability was 96.84%. Continuing improvement of technical performance in operations or resulting good market perceptions and an opportunity to expand our multi-brand turbine o fleets in the market. We continue to engage with various large IPP customers in offering o services of other OEM turbine assets showcasing our technical and financial strength. We are also participating in PSU's tenders to expand our o portfolio. We have been working on 
putting our building blocks in place to able to take larger portfolio with the parent execution ramping up the same should start flowing in our pnl with a lag of 1 to 2 quarters we are looking ahead and have geared ourselves to the to to be able to handle large portfolio with balance sheet strengthened and operational efficiency improved we are now ready for growth through both organic and inorganic opportunities on the inorganic front the opportunities are quite immense with 10 gigawatt of unorganized and fragmented oendum players owning the fleet of distressed oems we have taken over 51% of the majority stake in ifox and also in resovi recently which are leading and renowned independent oendum service providers having a very large customer base with a wide range of capabilities to offer multi brand oendum and special services to customers we believe that the strong sectorial tailwinds will lead to substantial increase in wind capacity addition over 100 gigawatt of wind capacity addition in the next 8 to 10 years leading to a massive growth from the current 45 gigawatt of installed capacity this will be aided by the central government auctions state auctions retail demand cndi segment demand for their green commitments as well as demand rising from green hydrogen ecosystem in the medium to long term as a as our parent company inox wins operation and execution ramps up to execute over a gigawatt scale of orders per annum the same will be added to our portfolio organically we expect to comfortably add over 1500 megawatt to our portfolio during fy24 to fy26 inox wind has built up strong work order of 2.5 gigawatt including a large 279 megawatt order from a cndi player 50 megawatt order from navaratna psu nlc india as well as recent mega order win of 1500 megawatt from cesc which is the single largest wind order ever awarded to an oem in the country it has also signed an exclusive licensing agreement for 4x megawatt series turbines which we believe will help us address the technological requirements in the onshore wind sector over the next decade inox wind strong order book and its strong product lineup significantly strengthens the growth prospects of both the companies for this decade during the quarter we continued our efforts towards improving the operational and technical performance of the turbines in our portfolio we continue to strengthen our relationship with our existing clients and are working on building new relationship our continuing thrust to improve operating performance leads to better power generation benefiting the customers and our nation's growth improving the health of the turbines proactively bring down significant breakdown cost and efficiency improvement showing positive results reducing overheads and increasing productivity we are continuing towards our digital journey with the implementation of sap and digital and adapting best practices in supply chain and maintenance our esg commitments remain strong and we continue our efforts to improve our esg compliance we have received independent assurance from eny for our fy23 sustainability report we have participated in snp corporate sustainability assessment for year 2023 i believe that we will be a major catalyst in the goal towards emission reduction in the value chain where we operate being part of a 5 billion dollar inox gfl group which has 90 plus years of footprint in fueling india's growth as well as the parentage of inox wind provides inox green with strong fundamentals and growth visibility as we continue our massive growth journey we look forward to create sustained value for all our stakeholders through operational excellence we will now open up the floor for q and a thank you thank you sir ladies and gentlemen 
we will now begin the question and answer session if you have a question please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question if you would like to withdraw your request you may do so by pressing star and 1 again ladies and gentlemen if you have any question please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles first question comes from preet nagashet from wells in visor please go ahead yeah hi uh so uh, one question i had is on the uh, inorganic side i think uh, uh, could you share any updates on uh, the opportunities that you see on the inorganic side and uh, any traction that you may have with such opportunity no i think uh, uh, mathu may add as i speak but i think uh, as a company uh, we've already acquired one uh, company i fox where we have a majority stake we've recently acquired a second company which is a small operating company but has significant technical competence which adds to our strength at this point in time we are uh, evaluating uh, certain other uh, acquisition opportunities uh, there is a large pipeline out there which could potentially be acquired uh, some in nclt some outside nclt so uh, you know beyond that it's uh, hard to say but i think what we can confidently say is that we had guided for 6 kilowatts by 26 and i think we are very firmly on track uh, to achieve that or beat that both uh, by way of organic and inorganic means mathu i think this is fine so uh, uh, given the larger opportunity that you are saying the uh, is that for inox wind uh wouldn't uh, you want to a kind of upgrade the guidance here from 6 gigawatts to maybe more let's get there i don't think the company is valued for 6 gigawatts i don't think people believe we will get there uh, so let's get there we are talking of going from uh, 2.7 when we ipo a year ago uh, to three years going to 6 gigawatts so we took uh, close to uh, what 13 years to set up 2.7 and we are seeing in the next three years we will be not of 6 gigawatt i think let's get there rather than talking bigger numbers okay uh any update on the uh, sale uh, that was there and uh, i think it was waiting for some connection transfers and stuff like that so so if you can share an update on that yes about what is this about i'm sure is this about nani barani yes yes yeah yeah uh, so i think we've already announced the sale of that asset uh, i think recently uh, as of yesterday or day before i think we've got the uh, there are certain formalities which we need to complete in terms of transferring the connectivity in terms of transferring the loan etc i think we are on track to i mean we are holding that asset for sale i think over the next couple of weeks that should go off uh, there is nothing much to be said about that we are fulfilling all the loan routine formalities gotcha okay great thank you and wish you guys all the best thank you thank you thank you next question comes from ardiksha from brick capital please go ahead hello hello please go yeah, ahead yeah, yeah hi uh, yeah uh, first of all congratulations for uh, uh, whatever you have said you are executing it with the order book and all of inox wind i think 6000 gigawatt 6000 megawatt for the inox screen is simply achievable organically <laughs> so Uh, and I, if you can throw some more light on inorganic potential that we can see as of now uh, from the management side look qualitatively yes i think given uh, the strength of inox wind and the order book and the traction uh, certainly uh, we can exceed that but as i mentioned we have guided for 6 gigawatt within 26 the larger vision remains to make this a 10 gigawatt platform at the earliest i think that's all that we can say at this point in time point number 1 point number 2 i think uh, on the organ inorganic side look it's very difficult to give exact numbers but we are evaluating uh, certain nclt targets we are evaluating certain other targets uh, which provide niche uh, o&m services 
and i think uh, uh, i mean as we move forward uh, we should be announcing more acquisitions the other thing also is that the existing uh, uh, two opportunities which we have ifox and resovi we will be using them as well to further grow and these guys are growing uh, mathu uh, so uh, so in terms of ifox itself it's one of the top 3 isp players in the uh, indian market and uh, they have more than uh, more than 100 customers and they are getting uh, rapid growth opportunities by themselves as well as putting our group's potential second in terms of inorganic acquisition we are in a very advanced discussion with several uh, 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 opportunities so hope we will announce soon uh, uh, good news to the market okay. and uh, uh, apart from ifox the second acquisition that we did what is the capacity that we are going to serve there so it is a very small niche engineering company with engineering uh, talent they doesn't have much operational capacity so basically uh, just to clarify it, uh, our industry has around more than 30 oems gone bust right so so these two players have potential to cater to as many wider range of oem services and capabilities and experiences right and with the supply chain experience and uh, support So along with our uh, group potential, so we can give any uh, level of range of services to any customer. So that is the uh, that is the benefit of that company. Yeah. Okay, and uh, just one small thing: uh, can you just quantify this proactive maintenance activities that we did during this Q3? What would be the higher cost compared to the normalized uh, earnings that we should estimate? there's no higher cost let's be very clear about that i mean uh, in, in this operation 3 4 5 crores quarterly is impossible to explain if you look at the 9 month uh, uh, ebitda that's roughly 50% and if you look at the 9 month fi 23 it was 74 right so there's or, organic growth which is continuously happening on this number quarterly you could have some quarter 5 crore more 5 crore less is there's no change in operation or this is not an exceptional item it's more timing you won't do re- uh, preventive maintenance in the high wind season you'll do preventive maintenance in the low wind season so that your uptime is the highest in the high wind season okay. these are normal operation uh, practices okay and uh, one last question once we achieve a, f- a significant free cash flow what is the board and the, what is the management thinking to do with the free cash flow that we will achieve in times to come I think let's get there. And as we said earlier, uh, we have multiple listed companies in the group. We have dividend policies in place. It's an ESG play. This company, so there will be a dividend policy. Uh, I'm sure the board, in its wisdom, will approve a dividend policy at the right time. And uh, that's what we will be doing with the free cash flows, barring keeping uh, some cash always on the balance sheet for strategic opportunities which may come along the way. Okay. Thank you, and all the best. Devan Shan team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from Khan Gar from Gar Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. So I have just two questions. My first question is, uh, in case of any natural calamity, right? I mean, who bears the risk of repairing the wind turbine? I mean, is it to is it with us? I mean, just want to understand how the contract is. That is my first question. Okay. Uh, so to answer the first question basically uh, all the assets are under insurance covered right so any natural calamity obviously the asset owner will have that iir policy the customer will bear it uh, under their policy we we as a service provider we have a mission breakdown policy which get us the equipment level thank you so just to reiterate we take no responsibility for any force majeure or acts of god or natural calamity that's at the end of the asset owner Okay, so then my second question is: uh, So let's say I think we say that the, the typical life of a contract is 15 to 20 years, right? And I think we have been in operation, like you said, from last 13 to 14 years. Will it be possible for the management to provide, uh, like, megawatt wise, when the contracts will be ending? So for example, let's say one for 100 megawatt, the contract might be ending in 2024 or 25. So that gives investors some idea, you know, how to discount the cash flows. So I mean, look. I think, uh, speaking naturally, we can't share year-wise, contract-wise details in the public domain. It's not practically possible. Having said that, we're a fairly young company. Uh, our, our first project sold outside. We were at about 200 megawatt. There's a 
timeline in our previous presentation. We were at about 200 megahertz in FY12, and these turbines last for 25 years. So on average, our entire fleet's aging would be close to blended six, six and a half years. So effectively, if you look at a 25-year cycle, we have on the blended fleet 20 years to go. Oh, yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for answering the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from Akilesh B, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. A few questions. In the press release regarding RESOV acquisition, we also mentioned this team has some uh, expertise in the Sri Lankan market. So is this a geography that we are trying to enter through them? Uh, do we have plans to go outside India with the OLM business? So, yes, uh, absolutely you are right, and we want to keep all options open to, uh, to grow the company. Okay, so, uh, is there something imminent or this is just, you know, a little uh, interesting? No, I don't think there's anything uh, beyond that which we can add. I think we're just keeping all our options open, as Mathu says. Uh, services is something which can not just be restricted to India. It could be a global opportunity as well. But I think, as we said, we're evaluating multiple opportunities. We are, okay. we are, we are, we are tying up what we think is relevant, keeping in mind the long-term growth story. Okay. And, uh, sir, one question on how uh, our billing is done. If I remember right, you mentioned that for each megawatt, uh, the O&M uh, revenue we get is around 8 to 10 lakhs a year. So is this uh, generally spread equally across quarters or uh, how, how does that work? So billing is uh, evenly spread across the quarters. Apart from the prevent, apart from the any breakdown, maintenance or breakdown thing which we have done, otherwise it is evenly spread across the quarters. And in case of some breakdowns uh, that happen, uh, we will be billing them for the spares etc. that we use, or uh, uh, is there a breakdown service charge separate? Uh, breakdown or uh, the customers for spare part and uh, spare part and the services which are beyond the comprehensive contract which are, which are beyond the which contract. are comprehensive contracts are in our scope but whatever is beyond comprehensive contracts will bill to the customers if and when such a situation arises and uh, one just uh, you know sort of offbeat question uh, and in the prior inox event call you mentioned that you know there is a certain turf of availability of bop players uh, you know to do third party uh, uh, turnkey work. Uh, is there any opportunity you see that our services company may enter into that segment, you know, to BOP also for other, you know, other projects? Question. We don't intend to enter any BOP services. First and foremost, we don't think that makes sense. Second, it's not, we're not going to compete with our parent company by doing the same services. And thirdly, this is a business which is focused on free cash flows, no debt, no working capital, bloating. It's a plain, smooth uh, annuity business. We're only focused on this business or high-end engineering services. Now, we don't want to get into EPC and so on and so forth. Oh, very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Next question comes from Tarun Advani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Sir, compared to uh, the Q3 FY23, I see that there is a dip in revenues from 71 crores to 60 crores. So, can you please help understand? You know, help us understand. You know, what is the reason for the dip? So, you know, in FY23, there are 13 trading income, which is one-time trading income, which has been uh, which has been accrued to us, which we have stopped completely from 31st March 23. And that's why you, uh, the apple-to-apple -apple revenues are not, apple-to-apple, uh, -apple it is not comparable. So, how much would that no, don't forget at that juncture, Inoxin was still a part of Inoxin. We had not spun it off and listed it separately. So, the businesses well, of Inoxin also carried out through that entity. So, trading income, if you see any of our previous presentations, was simply jacking up the, re I mean, it was increasing the revenue, but that had nothing to do with the O&M business. But we had to fulfill the obligations of Inox, Wind and Resco, which pertained to the period when it was fully consolidated or 100% owned by that entity. 
But apple to apple comparison is if you look at what happened in Q1 in Inox Green, Q2 this year in Inox Green, and now Q3 in this Inox Green. They are not Understood, comparable. Sir. Understood, sir. And sir, there is, a, a, you know, likewise there was a other income of 20 crores, you know, year back, and some 10 crores last year, and which you know which has now come down to around 58 lakhs. So this was uh, because of what, sir? Look, I don't think we have uh, we can compare to the previous period, as I said. Because that's not comparable. That is not for the Inox Green O&M business. You have to look at Inox Green O&M from the time that it got spun off from Inox Green. And we had committed to investors of Inox Green that post 31st March 23, there will be no other liabilities or trading income which we will, uh, which we will bear at Inox Green for the erstwhile consolidated business. So the only way to compare the O&M business is to look at Q1, Q2 and Q3. Yeah, sorry, sir. So my question was regarding Q2 uh, FY24. There was a other income of around 10.8 crores. Yeah, that was an operating income. So, because with respect to Q2, that was an operating income for certain uh, things uh, which, going forward with the auditors, will be classified as operating income. Okay. But those are those. You, you should look at those two in in a in a combined manner. Understood. Sure. Thank you. Next question comes from Vinay Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. For the great set of numbers and for the great execution turnaround that has been executed by the management and the entire team. Uh, sir, as you have always said, uh, just one question I had. Sir, what do you think the, there are so many orders? coming in from and the government orders of 10 gigawatt poor pure wind. So what is the management and positioning in regard to the market share the government, the company would be holding going ahead? Okay. Is this pertinent to Inox Wind or Inox Green? Uh, so Inox Green would be indirectly would be benefiting from the contracts that I must would be undertaking. So if you could I mean so I mean like I'd mentioned in my previous call on Inox Wind, I think we are you know, historically we've been fifteen to twenty percent of the market, but more than anything else we're driven by profitability. As I'd said earlier, we are not driven by the fact that we want to be number one and pile on thousands of crores of losses or go in for restructuring. Uh, we are driven by profitability. We've our CEO in WIND has guided that we are gearing up for gigawatt scale execution. Our ability is to get towards a 2 gigawatt number very soon. And I think that's where we are. So I think we should be north of a 20% market share. It depends on how you see the market. Uh, possibly more in the near future. Possibly in an expanded market even more as we move forward. But let's put it that uh, naturally as, as Inox WIND ramps up more and more. And I think they have a very, very healthy order book which we've spoken about, uh, it, Inox Green is a natural beneficiary on the organic side of things. Inorganic, in any case, Inox Green is pursuing on its own. Okay, thanks, you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from Khan Gar from Garg Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, if I look at the depreciation and amortization expense, it's like 13 crores for this quarter. Just want to understand... Uh, what will be this expense going forward and will we need to do a capex uh, for let's say because since we are getting up a 6 gigawatt so will we require any capex for this business no so you know in this company we doesn't need to do any capex so this 13 crore crore, crore dep uh, depreciation would be constant over a period of time and that will remain till the time this gross block which we have in books got uh, got consumed after we are not going any capex in this company, whatever the capex we require for development of the transmission line, etc., we are doing the in the company called Resco Global, which is a subsidiary of Inox Wind Limited. So, sir, like this plant where for which we are charging the depreciation, I'm assuming that it must be serving. There must be some capacity for that plant, right? I mean, that's what just trying to get a better picture on this. That plants have have cumulative capacity of four gigawatt out of which three mega three gigawatt is already commissioned and having a unutilized capacity of one gigawatt as of now. Yeah, so let's say when we scale up for six gigawatt, I think that's the plan, is right? So I mean, what is the kind of capex that we will be incurring? 
whatever would be you know earlier this company includes both the O&M and EPC businesses. So this capex right. has been incurred in this company when when the com- entity are combined and doing the both the businesses. As the EPC business has been spun off and has been created into a new entity called Resco Global, all the future, mm-hmm. all the future development will be carried out in uh, Resco Global. So till four gigawatt of uh, till you know till another one gigawatt of the development, this company will be utilized and for future future uh, growth perspective, future development, the capex will be incurred in uh, Resco Global. So basically, Resco is using then our capacity. Because I mean, no, it does not have anything to do with Inox Green. Resco is a 100% subsidiary of Inox Wind, and any future capex which we in, intend to incur in uh, developing our common infra will be done in Resco and not under Inox Green. So no future capex under Inox Green at all. So whatever is the oh. depreciation uh, which is being incurred on a quarterly basis will continue until and unless uh, our uh, net block gets consumed. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir, for answering the question. Thank you. That will be the last question for the day. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes your conference for today. Thank you for your participation and for using Dur Sabha's conference call service. You may disconnect your lines now. Thank you and have a good day.